back to our Outpost Observations, brought to you by the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association and in partnership with the BLM Bishop Field Office. My name is Molly Trash. I'm the Operations Manager with the Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association. And today we're diving right back in to the geologic story of the Alabama Hills. Now, last time we left off with a question. If the Alabama Hills and the Sierra Nevada are so similar in composition and age, then why do they look so different? Well, to answer this common question, let's first rewind way back about 50 million years ago. Now back then, the landscape here was very different than it is today. This area was a flat and vegetated oasis. There were no mountains or deserts. Can you imagine that? Back then, this area also received a lot of rainfall, unlike today. And the rich soil was full of nutrients, but that's not all. It also contained an excess of hydrogen ions. And when it rained, the water would travel deep through the soil and pick up those hydrogen ions, which made the water slightly acidic. Now this acidic water seeped into the cracks and fractures of the underlying granite, where it started its attack on the minerals, specifically on feldspar. It caused a chemical reaction with the feldspar and changed it to a clay, which made the rock weaker and weaker. Now this process is called chemical weathering. Over time, the chemical weathering attacked the granite, making it weaker and easier to break down before it was even exposed to the surface. Then over about 40 million years, the Sierra Nevada and the Alabama Hills began to rise up along faults that stretched across the Western United States. Now the overlying material that was on top of the granite was transported away by water, wind, and glacial activity. Now this process is called erosion. So without all of that pressure that was surrounding the granite like it had before, it's able to finally stretch out. And that's exactly what it did. The granite stretched out in all directions forming new fractures and expanding old fractures too. Now this process is called pressure release jointing. Now that the rocks of the Alabama Hills and Sierra Nevada are exposed to the surface, even more geologic processes work to transform them into what we see today. So hang in there and stay tuned for our next episode to find out how. See you then.